Uh, now, um, why we decided for, um, for fat to be a source of um, mesenchymal stem cells? On this um, uh, cartoon, uh, you can uh, you can see that um, with um, aging, um, we are losing a quite um, uh, quite a lot of mesenchymal stem cells in our bone marrow. I'm sorry for this misinterpretation on this uh, slide. In my presentation is quite correct. And um, uh, with age, we are really um, having about 1,000 times less of mesenchymal stem cells in bone marrow in comparison to uh, fat or to adipose tissue. Actually, uh, within the, in, uh, between the years of um, 20 and 80, so means um, almost all adulthood, the yield of mesenchymal stem cells in fat in adipose tissue is uh, really significantly higher in comparison to uh, bone marrow. So that's why we um, uh, focused on, uh, on fat. Also, there is one practical reason. We can get uh, <clears throat> enough fat um, uh, using local anesthesia. Typically, we are, uh, we are going for 50 milliliters to 200 milliliters, depending on medical condition that uh, we should treat with uh, mesenchymal stem cells from, uh, from fat. Uh, in 2017, we were able to publish the, one of the world's uh, largest um, uh, study. It was a case control study. And um, uh, we decided for um, a treatment of um, a patient with osteoarthritis and associated the disorders. And we were able to show its um, uh, safety and clinical efficacy. Today, I will show just uh, brief information. You can get more on the um, uh, Dossili uh, presentation, which, um, um, which is about um, a 60 minutes presentation about uh, detailed uh, results coming out of this uh, large uh, study. Um, I should also mention that uh, osteoarthritis is uh, really very frequent in, um, in a society. And typically, about 50% uh, of uh, population over the age of uh, 50 suffer from um, uh, osteoarthritis. Um, it was um, estimated that in the uh, European Union, there's about um, uh, 70 million citizens that are affected with uh, symptomatic osteoarthritis, mainly associated with pain, sometimes in swelling, and also malfunction of, uh, of the large joint. Typically, uh, the knee joint or the hip joint are the most uh, suffering joints, actually. I should also mention that there is no causal therapy that exists so far. We can also consider um, artificial joint replacement as a current, uh, current standard of care, but there are a lot of side effects uh, related to, um, uh, to this consequence. Also, the release of um, heavy metals, and um, uh, neurodegenerative um, uh, diseases associate, uh, association exist after, um, uh, after a replacement with uh, artificial joint. So the situation is not optimal. And we believe that the stem cells might contribute significantly to improved health of, uh, of uh, people suffering from osteoarthritis. Uh, we were able to uh, recruit for our study um, 1,128 patients. And um, we're able to treat uh, more than 1,800 joints. So uh, there was a rule that we can, uh, we can treat even several joints at the moment. But uh, typically, one or two joints were treated most, um, uh, most frequently in our uh, patient cohort. You can also see there's a broad age range for our uh, patients um, up to the age of 94. And still, we were able to um, uh, safely provide this treatment for, um, in this case, it was a um, 94-year-old uh, gentleman suffering with um, uh, knee osteoarthritis. Now, the median follow-up um, uh, was 17 months. And um, we used uh, clinical evaluation uh, using modified COS and HOS um, uh, outcome scores. Uh, here you can see the summary um, result. Um, again, uh, in most uh, details, you can uh, go for the dossier presentation. I uh, fully devoted about one hour to this um, this topic. Now it's clear that uh, before stem cell uh, therapy, uh, those patients were um, uh, suffering quite a lot. Um, uh, in the score and, uh, evaluation, we considered pain of the patient, also number of painkillers that um, um, had to be taken by the patient on a weekly basis. We also evaluated limping at walk, extent of joint movement and stiffness 
of the join. And you can see that there is a dramatic decrease in this uh, score, means uh, zero would be the best and uh, five meaning uh, would be the worst. And you can see that um, the outcome is even uh, getting better one year after, um, after treatment. We were also able to evaluate um, like 70% uh, score improvement. And also we were able to evaluate 50% of score improvement. In both measures, you can see how the, uh, the cohort of patients was um, increasing um, during time of uh, 12 months. We had few patients with score worsening just because there were also included patients with uh, stage 4 osteoarthritis, so very severe osteoarthritis. Those were the patients who really refused to go for artificial joint replacement. Now, in this um, large cohort of patients, um, uh, those were 45% uh, of those who uh, were actually scheduled already for artificial joint replacement. But um, uh, they um, told us that they would like to go for stem cell treatment even before that, and maybe they would be able to escape from that uh, large surgery. And uh, really, you can see that um, uh, only 4.2% um, the patient needed total joint arthroplasty. The rest of them we were able to, uh, to save from this uh, large surgery and they were fine after um, uh, stem cell therapy, at least uh, during the follow-up period of um, 17 months in the median. Now, here we can see an example of uh, cartilage regeneration uh, 12 months after um, stem cell therapy. Uh, you can see a very nice uh, histological section of uh, a nicely um, uh, regenerated uh, cartilage of, of this 52-year-old um, uh, uh, lady. Also, um, we uh, didn't, um, didn't see any serious uh, side effects, which is uh, very important for our work. And um, those are the side effects that uh, typically can occur after um, artificial joint replacement. But um, um, during our um, treatment follow-up, we never see any serious side effects like uh, described here on this, uh, on this slide. Although there were some uh, um, other side effects like local side effects, local pain and swelling, uh, sometimes we experience uh, some, um, uh, some fever or some increase of body temperature, five cases with reactive synovitis, but only a very small percentage of those. Headache, it's hard to evaluate whether it was related really to the procedure. And in two cases of uh, deep venous thrombosis. Those were actually two ladies who uh, didn't follow the um, exact recommendation for the um, uh, drinking regimen, drinking enough um, fresh water, after procedures and um, they were not able to move much. So um, that was the situation that was appearing on lower extremities in both of the ladies, but um, they were treated um, successfully with, uh, with blood thinning medications.